Having a keen interest and background in artificial intelligence, he's passionate about understanding the evolving intricacies of human emotions design. He's working closely with young adults in helping them understand the emotional aspects of relationship through emotions ladder and collision management, both being part of fundamental aspects of practicing design thinking in day-to-day -day life. Sir, we are honored to have you here with us today. We welcome you, sir. You. I may now request you to kindly address the gathering. Okay. Thank you. Hey, good morning, all. That energy makes me feel a little comfortable now, right? Okay. All right. Uh, I love asking a lot of questions because I figured that's the easiest thing to do. You know, ask questions, then give answers. Uh, I'll just leave this question with you. Uh, why did you choose to do an MBA degree? <laughs> give, 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 it, give it some thought. We'll probably come back to it. End of. I have 45 minutes. Is what I mean. yeah, since you started. We have presentation on the paper ready for you. Sure, I'll, I'll take that. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Okay. So insights to innovation and all of that good stuff. So that's that's uh, sounds exciting. And well, thanks for the long introduction. For a second, I was. I was wondering whom you are introducing, so, you know, it was like, was it me? But anyway, so my journey started with uh, artificial intelligence way back whenever, so I'm going to leave it to you to guess my age, <laughs> but uh, that was a time when it was just kind of popping out, artificial intelligence, and it started seeing his temporary death right immediately after. Right, and I'm happy to see it uh, back again, and not just back again, but really making a huge difference, be it you take ML to whatnot, right? Bots and other things. So, so that's where my uh, journey started from engineering, then to getting into L&D, and now into design thinking. So all along the thread has been, uh, you know, how do we help make people see things differently, think things differently. That's why you see the title as design the thinking. That's not an error, by the way. Right? If any of you thought that, okay, there is a mistake there. No, it's not. Because for us, uh, we, uh, so I, I represent the organization Intellect Design Arena, the erstwhile Polaris software, right, from Chennai, founded by uh, Mr. Arun Jain, which, uh, we kind of realized uh, halfway through, can I sneak out and come down? Is that better? Can I? Okay. Okay, so this, this looks better. I, I was, very simple reason. It was a single chair and then I was starting to feel a little lonely there up on this table, right? <laughs> so this, this is better. All right, so, um, when we were halfway through that journey, very successful journey of uh, you know, Polaris Software Lab, which is a services company, right? We predominantly, not predominantly, we were working on doing uh, services for BFSA segment only, right? You name it, we were doing work. You name it. Citibank, we were there. JP Morgan Chase, we were there. Royal Bank of Scotland, we were there. Then suddenly we realized that there's a very little room for innovation when you're in services because you're always listening to what the customers want you to do. You're always taking, if I can say, orders from the customer. Customer will say, do 10 things, we do 10 things. Then you come back, ask the customer again, okay, 10 things done, what next? That's when Arun was going through this journey of uh, his own reflection and said, if I have to move to path-breaking innovation, let me go to an agenda setting mode, which is products. Right? What does product do? It makes you want to use it. Correct? <coughs> Nobody asked uh, Steve Jobs for an iPhone. None of us asked for an iPhone. But he was able to see certain things and start 
moving into that innovation, you could call it insights to innovation, he came up with iPhone and we all know rest is history. Correct? So that, that's a journey that we have gone in. In that process, of course, we try to do what everybody else does uh, world over. Bumped into design thinking as a concept approach process that Stanford was following very effectively. We said, OK, we're going to take that, follow it here. We followed and then we failed miserably at the beginning. Miserable failure. We were like scratching our head, what went wrong? And we said, wait a minute. What worked there may not work here because it has to be contextualized for this part of the globe as well. right? For example, you take uh, design thinking, one of the things they say, and you will hear this in every other video of Stanford, is there is no hierarchy. right? Uh, last week, I had, a, I had to anchor a two-day workshop for uh, one of the state government officials. You go and try and tell them there is no hierarchy. You know, they, they had a shock of their life. What do you mean there is no hierarchy? Because the whole system is structured around hierarchy from approval process to whatnot, right? Everything is around hierarchy. If there is no hierarchy, they don't know how to run their life in office. Right? For some of them, it is like there is hierarchy, so I'll push all decisions upwards. So I'm saying. So we realized it has to be contextualized to the, the culture, the society, the way the society is wired in this part of the globe. The reason I'm saying that is, if any of you choose to get more interested, choose to get more interested in uh, design thinking and eventually when you take on your career and wherever you go, you'll have to be very sensitive to the culture of the organization before you start saying, let's embark on design thinking. I found this to be very interesting, let's do it. <coughs> so that's where we came up with design the thinking. How do we work on the mindset of the people first before they can learn to apply design thinking. And ever since it's been a good journey for us. Not only as in our organization benefiting from it, we have uh, in all about 12 products that we offer to all the banking customers. We are the only ones, frankly, we are the only ones in the world who could offer all possible products a financial institution would need. Our competitors. Thank you. There are our competitors like Mises to here, Finical to Taminos. They all work on one or two particular products. So when the bank decides to move from core banking from one competitor to wealth management, then they have to go to some other vendor. Right? When they choose us, they don't have to go anywhere. So this journey has taken us to be addressing all the customer needs that way in terms of design thinking. And uh, we are proud we run all the major financial infrastructures of the country. Reserve Bank of India, LIC, NABAR, and now globally marketplace, GEM, initiative that uh, Prime Minister had started for government procurement. All four of them runs on our product. Right? Applying design thinking approaches. Yeah? So wh what did we do differently? That helped us. We call this the hygiene factor. Can you see from there? It's the light is too much. Yeah, could we have that? Uh, just, I don't know where you will turn that off. That's a little too bright. So, thank you. So the first one reads as listening. Simple. We all do it. Sure? Yes. Should we put you on a lie detector? <laughs> no, okay, so no was for we don't do it or for the lie detector. Two, two different. Okay, lie detector. So I got my answer, folks. All right. I was a pathetic listener about 15 years ago. If somebody comes and says there is a problem before even the person finishes, I have a solution. You know, then the person will say something else and you realize that's not the problem at all. Right? I mean this person this person is my wife, right? So right? But that changed me and today I'm a, also 
a coach at ISB, executive coaches at ISB, and that requires you to be absolutely listening and not giving gyan, right? So that was the journey I've taken. So it is not difficult. You have to be mindful, and that is very important if you are trying to come around trying to be innovative at your work environment. Listening to what is being said and listening to more importantly what is not said. Right? That will come only when you are not busy trying to prove your point, but to keep listening, right? This is not your debate, this is dialogue. Easy? What's the difference between your debate, discussion, dialogue? Dialogue is just a conversation, nice. Debate is? Two sides. And there is also this uh, new, another one, discussion, which is like general conversation that keeps happening. So debate is trying to prove who is right. Dialogue is trying to understand what is right. You want to get into innovation, you need to figure out what is right. Not who is right. Yeah? This is my favorite one. Observation. So how many of you went on, I'm told you went on a very nice uh, walking trip of 3-4 kilometers during the puja. How many of you did that from here? Oh wow, nice. Could have created a traffic jam by walking, right? <laughs> Did you observe anything different than when you are in the car? Yes. Not that you couldn't have observed when you are in the car, it is just that you didn't. Right? The sa very same thing that you observed when you are walking existed when you are going by car, existed when you are going by bus. It's just that you started observing it now. So observation, or let's say you are trying to buy a new bike or a car. Suddenly when you are going on the road, every other bike is of interest to you now. The same road you would have been going several years or months, same bikes would be going past you. If at all, if you are anyone like me, you would have complained, why is this guy cutting across the traffic like this and going? But suddenly you start observing. So for us in design thinking, Observation is again a hygiene thing, right? You will have to keep observing what's happening around. So history asset, if you go to the HBR article, history asset, why Steve Jobs decided to go on the journey of iPhone? Because he observed the difficulties tourists were going through, right? One of the biggest trigger for him was, you go on a vacation, you have your camera, you have your music system, you have your organizer, you have your phone. You go into a restaurant, come back and say, okay, you say, camera is there, my organizer, oh my God, my phone, where, where is it? So you're saying, why do people have to clutter their life when the only thing they want to do while at vacation is to enjoy the vacation? That came out of observing, right? All right. Seen this, anybody? <laughs> Used it, anybody? Yes, this, how old do you think this is? Centuries old? You'll see it in some of the museums or Maharaja palaces as well, right? What about this design, folks? What's so unique about this? Spill proof? The rim is designed in such a way it's spill proof. So water shortage as the what's going on now is not only now, there there was no it was not about water shortage, but reachability to water resources was yes. little longer, right? So no gender bias, predominantly the men of the house go into the farm to work and earn the bread and women of the house go carry the water back home. Correct? So somebody kept observing this, came up with a design, 
there is a neck with which they can hold the water, I mean the hold the vessel. And look at the profile that fits into the area where they carry the wa water. It is not only just fitting in, it translates the weight across the body rather than at one point. Because people were walking for a few kilometers to carry water. And the other beauty is, uh, if you had seen uh, this being used in a well, right? The advantage of this versus the bucket, plastic bucket in a well, put that, pull water out, draw water out of the well. There is always one season where the level of water goes down irrespective of how strong your monsoon is, right? If you put the bucket, the water level is the lowest, you put the bucket and pull, you're going to stir up all the muck, dirty water comes out. This will float, the neck is designed in such a way you still filter out the good water, you continue using it. Right? There is so much science behind this and all this had come up because somebody decided to observe what is going on in the life of whoever will use this. How old is this? Centuries old, 1842, 52, something like that. Never had to be changed till date. Never had to be touched. I mean, people try to improvise it by adding a little plastic cushion on it, soft cushion on it, longer, shorter, different colors, different metal. But the design is the same. If you look at, these are some of the elements that would have gone into a couple of these examples. There are plenty of examples. Simplicity, experience, frictionless, efficient, complexity reduction. It is not about coming up with something really fancy. It is about, have you solved the actual problem? Many great solution that you see will be wondering, my God, that's a great thing. Why is it not taken off, right? We do bump into that sometimes. That's because they were solving the wrong problem. And finally, questioning assumptions. Always keep asking that why. You want to innovate, you want to disrupt something, you keep asking why. History. Oh, the story of Airbnb, OYO today. Why should I be forced to have a 24-hour oh, check-in, check-out or one whole day? Why should I be forced to stay one whole day or 24 hours in a hotel when I don't need it? Someone asked that question. Right? So that's, for us, questioning assumptions is really key. Otherwise, what happens is, folks, we end up solving the symptom and not the problem. So many so-called innovation and solutions have worked around the symptoms. Simple example, you have a headache, you are struggling with a headache for a week, you go to the doctor, painkiller or crocin painkiller, keep giving, headache goes away, comes back, headache goes away, comes back, then you move on to the next doc. The next doc checks out and says, ah, wait a minute, your problem is in the stomach. You are not eating well or you are not sleeping well or whatever, whatever. So I'm going to give you an acid blocker, the, your headache should go away. After two weeks, it's gone. So that doctor works on your actual problem. What is the actual problem rather than symptoms, right? What all can we design? Any quick thoughts? And don't give me this anything and everything. <laughs> that answer is taken by me. So what all can we design? Products and services. Ideas can be designed. Beautiful. Experiences. I heard something here. Thoughts. Thoughts, events, ideas, experiences, product, services, policies. What was that? Okay. 
can be, but we are not going to do that. Someone else is. Whatever your belief would be, right? Thought process. Yes, you're saying that thought process can be designed. Strategies. Actually, the answer is anything and everything can be designed. Right? One of my uh, passionate things that I do, of course, on the weekend, not as part of office, but as a passion, is I run a, what's called a life design lab for people who are in the midlife in their career and life itself, right? 40 plus. How can someone design their life going forward? It is not like we were not doing this before. The moment you say, can I design experience? The moment you put on that hat and ask a different question, your approach will be different. Right? You, wa you want to get into innovation, you want to get into disruption, you want to do something completely differently, you start shifting the focus. Honda shifted its focus from fuel efficiency years ago right, to energy efficiency. Everybody was fighting. They started the war, everybody was fighting fuel efficiency, fuel efficiency. Then Honda realized, wait a minute, 20 kilometers a liter, 25 kilometers a liter, 30. You can't go beyond that. You can't say 150 kilometers a liter. Right? They realized we are working on the, we, we are focusing on the wrong thing. So they shifted to energy efficiency. The moment we say, folks, our focus is energy efficiency, suddenly somebody says, why can't we have hybrid engine? Somebody says, wait a minute. The exhaust is uh, letting go of so much of energy. Can I recycle it? So they recycle the exhaust energy, which is part of many uh, hybrid cars now, right? Or they came up with multiple cylinder vehicle, and it will decide how many cylinders to fire, depending on whether you are in a highway or a city. So putting on the hat of design, that I'm getting into a journey of designing something rather than just uh, trying to solve a problem, it's easy, right? So, is that me? Okay. Healthy lifestyles, language. The Devnagari script, they were designed based on certain alphabets you will use your lips. Certain you will use your tongue. Certain alphabets are designed to use your throat. Right? So that, that, of course, a city can be designed, right? Being future focused. One of the classic examples uh, close by to India, Singapore. Recently, uh, I, uh, I found out that they're trying to come up with one more metro. They are already connected by metro all through the country. They are coming up with a completely new metro line and I am wondering where did they find the space to put in another metro line, right? Education, your financial things. So finally, that answer is taken. I said anything and everything, right? So therefore, what is a differentiator if you want to innovate? Quiz for some of you. I saw your vision, mission, your quality statement and all that. Can someone rattle that out completely? Right forum, wrong question, wrong time. To be a globally recognized center for excellence. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And what are the, the second and the third one? So I remember the vision. We had multiple missions. So. Okay. I'm out. looking for that one. It's always the answer I'm looking for never comes out, right? It's, that's a reality. Socially sensitive, right? Was that one of it? The first one, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Socially sensitive. Right? We don't want to innovate something that works great and then it lets out something else into the ecosystem that's destroying few other things that peacefully coexisted before, right? For an example. Why that will happen? Here is a quick match the following. No, actually differences, not match the following. <laughs> Traditional thinking is what's the right answer? Everybody, yeah. 
there is a problem we'll say okay guys how do we solve it what's a what's a what's the solution or uh, for those of you who had corporate experience before you moved here i don't want to hear about the problem i want to hear about the solution what would be design thinking way of doing this what's the right question thank you what's the right question you keep asking the question you keep asking the question you keep asking the question those of you who had uh, had experience in the five whys of toyota why 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 is this a problem why is this a problem you will actually in that time frame you will bump into the actual problem itself yeah more talk more action more listening it's about listening 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 along with the observation listening listening data analysis information what else improvising sorry innovation observation interesting okay close stories data would say out of 100 customers 10 of them didn't like it if you go to the story you will probably unearth more things maybe the other 90 of them decided they will like it in spite of the the stories that these people had gone through right stories will give you the clue in design thinking we say we need data i'm not saying no data right sorry we need data data will tell you what the problem is correct what and where the problem is design thinking will help you to understand why that is a problem that's a difference one of you said analysis the moment we get data analyze the data jump into a solution events experiences iphone was all about experience right it's all about experience any great things that you see that excited people it is always about they touch the experience end of the day that's the one that leaves lasting impression with you not anything else right that's why places where people don't mind spending more money when iphone came in the first time in the history of united states consumers were standing in queue overnight to buy it unheard of because of the experience talk about facts what could be the design thinking approach for this should we take a tea break and come back again <laughs> if you are already tired the so most important folks i even alerted you by asking socially sensitive if you are socially sensitive you will not be talking about the facts you will be talking about the feelings it is not about somebody said design government policy so policy is yeah but if it affects a sector of section of your ecosystem or we are talking about the feelings or the facts it is about getting into innovation getting into trying to solve a problem differently it's about you all consciously try to switch from traditional to design thinking way that's all we are saying here right and it is not difficult it's a matter of tuning your mind towards that that's why we started with design the thinking how do we tune ourselves to that right okay so three quick design approaches that i'll uh, run you through that you should keep in mind when you are getting into this journey wherever you are going to go this is directly from ido stanford d school ido right they come they they have come up with some great great innovation including years ago the flexible toothbrush to the shopping cart with the brake all of that 
right? You should watch some videos from Tim Brown and YouTube if you want more details. It is about humans always desire more comfortable, more convenient things. Many times it's technically feasible. If you don't have the viability part addressed, you're not giving experience to the customer. If you're not giving experience to the customer, your innovation is as good as not being done at all. Right? You take, you take any, any great ideas, great designs that have come out and suddenly people have not adapted to it. You will almost always bump into that. Simple example, I come from Chennai, hot, hotter, hottest climate, right? I always keep asking everybody, when you fly down to Chennai, you should see only solar panels and not anything else in the terrace of all the houses. I've been asking this question for nearly 12, 13 years now. No answer other than viability. My time's up. Oh. Now it's working. Did I do something? How come you guys didn't say that my mic is not working? Sorry? Now it's okay. Guys, come on. So I'm going to start walking up there now. And that's trouble. Right? So that's, that's about giving an experience by taking care of viability. It could be anything. It is not just money. Please remember. For us, it is always time, quality, scope. We say customer says something, we will do it technically feasible because we have been doing this for several years, decades. But if you miss the deadline of the customer, the CAO is in trouble. You have not given him or her the experience. Right? So that's one. This is straight out of Dr. Roger Martin Rotten School. Mystery to heuristics, to algorithm. The scale and reach of your innovation, ideas, prop, solution and all that will be only if you move from mystery to algorithm quickly. Otherwise, you would have done it and only a section of the society would have benefited, not a larger population. Example. McDonald's. When the founders of McDonald's excited, super hit, so they started four or five joints in Southern California, even a bigger hit, they didn't know what to do. So the investment banker Ray Kroc came in, he created an algorithm for McDonald's. And today you go to any McDonald's across the globe, the same. Absolutely the same. There are several examples you take from South India a Sarvana Bhavan hotel, right? The Sambar, not lunch time yet, right? Talking about food. There's like McDonald's and Sambar and all that. I don't want you to get hungry, but uh, the Sambar of Sarvana Bhavan tastes the same in Chennai, in Delhi, in Vellore, in California. That's algorithm, right? Algorithm, while desirability, feasibility, viability gives you innovation that gives experience, algorithm ensures the scale and reach. Have any of you bumped into a Arvind Eye Care story? No? Arvind Eye Care, started by uh, Dr. Govindappa Venkatasamy when he retired at the age of 60. For him, we always say necessities, right, for innovation, your standard quotes. He felt at that time the cataract surgery was $300 per lens to replace a lens, $300. This is several years ago. So many people from rural areas couldn't afford, so they were growing blind. Right? And he felt we could stop that. And his dream was not only I'm going to stop it in India, I'm going to stop it across the world. I want to come up with a lens that general public can afford it. Okay? And that he did. 
when he finally rolled out, today they do it for more than 80 countries, less than $5 a lens, right? And some of the surgeries are free. Their model is for people who can't afford it's free, for people who can afford pay and go. Their margin of error in surgery is much, much, much less in numbers when compared to UN United States of America, where US doctors do on an average 250 to 300 eye surgeries, these doctors do 2,500 eye surgeries a year. Where do you think his inspiration was? He wanted to scale, reach 80 plus. The very organization I mentioned. When his consultants couldn't help him beyond a point to think through, he said, forget it guys, I'm going to California. I wanted to go and understand how McDonald's works. Everybody laughed at him. What has McDonald's got to do with health care, eye care? What is this? This man has lost it. But for him, he realized if my innovation has to create an impact across society, I need to come up with an algorithm and that. So when you are trying to come up with something completely new that will give a huge experience, it is, it is what we have benefited from by connecting dots outside of the domain that you are working not in your same domain. It will be like doing it again and again, right? The same old thing. You will not disrupt. Yeah, you, you, you can talk about several things. I mean, the, the trigger for the guy who came up with Uber was not just the car. It was some other incident. So he connected back to something else. For us in intellect, uh, how do we provide additional experience? We connect outside the box to Ritz-Carlton. People can question, what has IT got to do with Ritz-Carlton? Right? So it is always, that's what Dr. Govinda Pat did. He connected outside and rest is history. Arvind Eye Care is a phenomenal success story. Third is, this is our own approach of design. Unstated requirements of your end user is important for coming up with unique solution or innovation. Stated requirements, everybody is there. Again, going back to the beaten down example, a case study of iPhone, several of the things that you see is unstated. The same time when Steve Jobs said, get rid of this uh, keypad in a mobile phone is the time when Blackberry said, we are going to add extra key for you to touch and then go to your mailbox immediately. And he said, wait a minute, get rid of the keypad because he saw what was the unstated requirements. He said, okay, people want to see lot more things in the screen. The keypad, or in my phone, the keypad is taking away half of that space. Nobody went and told him, listen, somebody has to get rid of this keypad. Nobody did. And patterns and anti-patterns. You would have done or bumped into Gillette case studies. Gillette Massive failure when it came to India first because they missed the patterns and anti-patterns. They thought everybody in India wants to shave, great. We are going to go home with a truckload of money, guys, designed for Indian environment. They tested the blades because Asians have thicker uh, hair, facial hair, tested, except they decided to test it with a bunch of Asians in the US, not in India. They launched it, miserable failure. Then they said, we are going to send a few hundred guys to go and observe patterns of usage of this. Then they realized, wait a minute. The fathers and grandfathers, they, are, they have a mirror in the front. They sit, they have a towel, and then they have a very small cup, a few ounces of water where they dip, clean the blade, and shave. Versus the people who tested it, they tested it in running waters. Simple. So they had to go back. Few other patterns they observed including joint family, 15 people, one bathroom, so the male always uh, wants to use the bathroom first so the ladies can use it at convenience after they finish their work. So almost always uh, he will end up uh, shaving in uh, less light or no light, right? So safety is important and what not. Then they relaunched and we know now history. So that is about observing patterns and anti-patterns. And finally, unearthing the blind spots, right? Which the blind spot is customers don't know what they want. We also don't know what they want. 
and how do we unearth together. Okay, so I'm going to skip how much more time do I have? Anybody keeping time? I was just, just checking, so this is quickly, this is um, a classic case study of trying to solve a problem by not asking a question but assuming that is a problem. Nepal, infant mortality, premature babies dying frequently in the tribal community. They realized, okay, lack of incubators should have more incubators. We have to reach more incubators to the tribal area. They jumped in and said the problem is lack of incubators. Get in touch with the NGOs, philanthropists. Tons of incubators came in. Mortality rate was continuing to happen and increase. Then they realized, wait a minute, something is going wrong. They sent, I'm told, students exactly like you all who are doing <coughs> management degree and of course this was from the US. They went along with the tribal people. They stayed there. They started observing what is happening around. They started observing what is going right and what is going wrong. Then they realized it is not the availability of incubators because there is no electricity. There is no consistent predictable electricity for the tribal people to hook up the incubator. So they get scared. And it is not like they want to leave the prematurely born baby with, with someone who is just running a small clinic as a boutique, I'll take care of it. For them, if I reach the baby to the hospital, there is a guard there waiting, everything is going to be fine. They couldn't reach the baby to the hospital. Almost always it is not like the babies were dying the moment they were born. They were almost losing their uh, life closer to reaching the hospital. So these kids came up with this as a suggestion, which is a warm blanket bag, uh, again connecting outside the box to a sleeping bag. What all they realized from the pattern was the baby has to be kept warm enough to reach to the hospital. That was their problem, refined problem statement was you have to keep the babies warm until they reach the hospital, rest will be taken care of. And there is no electricity. So they came up with this bag where you can pour hot water, it will stay warm for a few hours. And that was doable, that was comfortable for the tribal people because there is no electricity. And boom, in no time the mortality rate reduced. That's about jumping in for a solution immediately after seeing the problem, solving the wrong problem without observing patterns. I gave you three hygiene factors of listening, dialogue and observation. Three, these are the rules that we have come up with after bumping into a lot of challenges and bumps and roadblocks, right? We always try to complicate our life by doing more. So then we realize less is more. We also at one point in time told our customer, we have 38 offerings for you or 28 offerings. We were like, huh? We didn't even realize that a financial institution should have 28 different things. Maybe we said, okay, we're going to reduce. Our inspiration again, Apple. Look at IBM versus Apple. Less is more, Apple handful of products. <coughs> IBM with 160 plus products. Look where they are in terms of, forget the revenues, in terms of impacting larger population, right? So less is more, last 2% equals to 200%. All of the innovation, including what we talked about, BlackBerry keyboard to keyless, right? It was that last 2% experience. Anywhere the last 2% experience is what the consumers are ready to pay. Ritz Carlton, people keep going there in spite of them being very expensive because you go. When you are staying there, you are asking them, oh, that night you have a bad neck, you are going to ask them, Give me, can you get me a firm pillow? Yes, sir, done. Okay, I am tired, can I get a hot chocolate? Yes, ma'am, we will send it to your room. After nine months, you go to London, you check in, you will get a call saying that, should we send a firm pillow? Or better yet, 
sometimes they'll say there is an additional foam pillow for you in case if you want to use it. And can we send you the hot chocolate now? People go for that experience. People are willing to pay extra for that experience. Everywhere, Ford invented automobiles, right? Japanese took it at a 2% experience, saying that predictable quality for you guys. Rest is history. And Koreans came in and added two more percentage to that, saying that I will give you smaller, economical, affordable, da 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 da. Rest is history. It is always that 2%. It is not like you have to throw everything out and start all over again, right? And uh, this is a vocabulary that we use. It's a very common in our organization. We are used to prioritizing based on sequential numbering, right? Give me, give me your priority, order of priority. You'd say one, two, three, four, five. That sometimes the three and the one are of equal priority. It is like the ranking in sports, right? First, second, third. There is a tie in the third place. Then they will skip fourth and go to fifth. So certain ideas or problems for that matter could be of equal priority. The moment you say one, two, three, four, five, people will think, okay, let me work on one. Let me figure out, I mean, I, I worked on the top two. What's a big deal? So we rewired it, working on the minds of the people. We rewired it saying, if it is a problem, it's weighing heavily on you, right? So we'll add a weight to each of those problems or opportunities. So today, whenever we do any of those things, we'll say, what are the 5,000 gram items that you're going to work on, right? What are the 2,000 gram conflicts that you're facing right now with the team? Give me the 1,000 gram idea that you have that will solve this for the customer. And believe me, that has given us a lot of output. It increased the focus that people have. Right? when we do that. So these are the laws that we have. Just to give you a feel for how the journey of design thinking creates impact is starting with design mind, which is what I started saying, why it should be the mind first, then get into the process. We also said, mind and then the space. You give people a space. That is why you will you will keep hearing Google has a huge thing, right? Google culture is different. There is a pod, there is a resting area, there is what not, there is a bar, there is things. So that is space. That is space. So many places you will see people ape what worked great in another organization in terms of space, still has not given the results. No, we, I'm saying this from experience. We like seeing some of the organizations have treadmill in the middle of the work area, right? You see in the movies. We said, okay, order 30 treadmills, top of the class. We put it in all of our floors. Nobody used it. And we quietly went and asked them. We said, no, no, I kind of feel uncomfortable when my colleague is struggling with this coding problem and I'm sitting and running on the treadmill. Sure, okay. Right? That is why the space, the process, and the framework. So, but it all starts with the mind first, right? So that's where you saw for us. What we did was out of experience, we split the design thinking into two. Design the thinking, the thought, and other things of the people first. Therefore, they will be able to apply the process next. That's because of this side, like I say, hierarchy to empathizing to what not is more important first, and then this. So by the way, you understood, right? There's an alarm bell for me here. <laughs> yeah, so I respect that, that's why I asked, so. So I'll, I'll rush through this quickly. If you have to design your journey, you have to design your thinking, right? Simple. Unless you shift that thinking process, you will continue to do what we are doing and we will continue to face the same, same challenges that we face. We will continue to produce the same result that we have been producing. This is our experience. So we work on shifting the thinking. School of Design Thinking works on 
lot of, I'm very excited about doing or being part of that organization as well, which is founded by Arun Jain. So my, the job that pays me is uh, intellect design arena. That's also exciting, but what gives us a lot more energy is school of design thinking. We work with Gram Panchayat leaders, right? Elected Gram Panchayat leaders. What are we doing differently? We are shifting their self-image, shifting their thinking. We go train them on design thinking for two days, three days. We have tied up with the uh, National Institute of uh, Rural Development run by Dr. W.R. Reddy, IS officer, in cluster developments of 100 different clusters across the country. Where we are trying to show them that they are not just elected Gram Panchayat leader, you are the CEO of that Panchayat. The moment you shift that thinking from I am a, just a Gram Panchayat leader to I am the CEO of phenomenal outcome. Believe me or not, phenomenal outcome. Suddenly they feel they are in charge. Suddenly they feel they can do a lot more. And they are sitting and actually working out models and project plans and whatnot. Right? So we all can. We all can. But what will stop you? I'm just going to leave these thoughts with you. What will stop you? So this is something that we call it 13 musical notes that we use as part of our uh, design the thinking uh, approach. Skills expertise. We all have. You have plenty of skills. You have expertise. You have to develop the attitude of having perspective for things. This is about in a management lingo simply going about and seeing the entire ecosystem. Or you can call it as, you know, stuck with a tree and missing the forest, whatever you want to call it as. People who have taken perspective are the ones who have done disruption, heavy disruption. Mail order catalog existed in uh, United States of America about 25, 30 years ago. At the same time, e-commerce opportunity existed. What all Jeff Bezos did was put them together. We have an e-commerce uh, possibility and people are still struggling with mail order catalog. The catalog comes to my mailbox, I write, I pick, I tick, tear it, put it in an envelope, send a check along with it, buy the items, it comes. He said, I'm going to put them together. That's all he did. And we know rest is history. The way we shop has changed forever. That is perspective. Only when you take perspectives, you will generate ideas. Otherwise, you won't come up with, at least our experience is very difficult to come up with disruptive ideas. Why you will not do that? These are what we call as frictional forces. Doubts in your minds. Conflicts that we have on perspectives. Anger. How many of you get, okay, how many of you don't get angry here? Let's say easier hands that will go up. Thank you for the honesty. Okay. Thank you. I was watching this movie, uh, Storm Boy. Anybody seen that movie? Grandfather takes a granddaughter. They're walking in the thing. So he was telling, it's all about uh, reflection, you know. Uh, he was telling his story. The granddaughter gets angry. So he's saying, uh, I forget her name. Said, Why are you getting angry? She says, no, I love to be angry. And then he says, no, there is no future in that. There is no future in being angry, right? So anger, fear of the unknown. When you are designing your journey, your career, what not, fear of the unknown. And ego is not about philosophical connotation here at all, friends. Ego is about I know it all. Anytime you walk in to solve a problem, to do an innovation, if you walk in saying, I know it all, you're done. And finally, just one point here, it's okay to be vulnerable. Okay, this is something I learned from my CEO. Late into a meeting at about 8.30 in the night, he said, okay, uh, let, let's meet again tomorrow. We are all looking at him. He said, don't look at me. I don't know the answer. I don't know. Just because I'm a CEO doesn't mean I have to have answers for all of these things. Let's sleep over it. We'll discuss again tomorrow. That taught me it's okay to show that you are vulnerable, right? Because a lot of opportunities come when you step into that mindset. Limiting beliefs, of course, I don't have to tell you. We all know. If you don't, if any of you have seen the elephant in the temples, 
right? How they will never move their once uh, one leg if there is a chain in their leg. The day the elephant is born, the first thing the mahar does is tie the leg, put a rope, right? Tie the leg to condition the mind. Whenever there is something in the leg, you cannot move that leg. So the next time you go to any of the temple, you watch the chain will not be even tied to the wall. It will just be around that leg. When there is a chain in that leg, elephant will not move that leg. And many times we all get into that conditioning. Many of us get into that conditioning, if not all, that I cannot do certain things. That's not for me. It's I no, How can I be doing this? Yeah. So just get get out of that limiting belief. And finally, if you want to be in the journey of innovation to disrupting, to creating a history in wherever you are going, it all starts with curiosity. It all starts with curiosity. Yeah? Curiosity is what led to several breakthrough things, innovations, ideas, and whatnot for humankind. Yeah? Okay. What's up? We are back. Thank you, sir. It was insightful listening to your perspective on the value of implementing design thinking in a business, and I'm sure. We have developed a really good understanding of the same. So I would request you to please come up on stage. I would like to request our Dean Corporate Relations, Professor Moa Banerjee, to present Mr. Anbu Ratnavil with a token of sincere appreciation. Sir, it was a pleasure having you as our guest. Kindly accept the memento. So sir has said, if you have any questions, you can write to him. You have his uh, email ID there. And his phone number is also there. <laughs>